Uh, let's start another video at the iron farm. So let's get the- oh, you know what? There were like golems all over this right now. I watched like 15 of them spawn at once. So as per usual, the iron farm was actually not working last time. It was uh, 134 villages, delusion fixed it, same old story. Should be at 192 now, so congratulations on us. We have a little bit of a mission on our hands. Apparently the lava that is in that portal that connects to that one and the nether is not there. So we got like 30 stacks of despawning poppies. Let's do something about that. All right, so... All right, so what we did last time on our world uh, is something I really liked that we did. So I figured out that we could have the lava at the top part of the portal block, because this is where the poppies come through. And I want to do that again. This isn't my shulker box. Where is my hashtag white lives matter shulker box? I'm going to go find it. Not now. And then I'm just going to put in one lava block. And then I'm going to destroy the other portal. So right away, we should see that Poppy would still come out through the same portal. Actually, that... Mm, if, okay, if this was permanent, and it would just appear here, then I would just put lava on that block. Uh, okay, if I go back through this portal and link the two, let's see what happens. I don't even know. Uh, get on the wiring. Okay. And... <laughs> How is this hap- Okay, you know what? Screw it. If that's gonna link that way, then I'm just gonna... Hey, if it works, uh, let's just block it in then. <laughs> if that gets all the poppies, then I am a happy camper, because we do not need all of these. Alright, and that is the poppy story concluded. Or to be continued. Delusion, I'm doing it! What are you doing? I'm recording 1080p, 60 FPS, and my game isn't. My, my computer's not on fire. Okay, I can't actually find my White Lives Matter shulker box, and this is stressing me yeah. out. Everybody, check your inventories. I don't want diamonds. This isn't my shulker box. Oh, look, a cocoa bean farm. This guy has the right idea. Yeah. Maybe he has my White Lives Matter shulker box. Somebody, I think it was Chipmunk, was over here placing glass. No, it was the new guy, Floaty. And he's like, hey, I ran out of sh I ran out of cocoa beans. Where can I get some? I'm like, that was it in that chest. He's like, oh, I'm out. And I'm like, well, congratulations on not making a farm. <laughs> and then he made a farm. Good for him. So it would appear in the creation of this farm, I took a ender chest full of iron and swapped it out for my hashtag white lives matter shulker box. So now I can take what's mine and, you know, actually, I should probably just bring this iron shulker box back to the iron farm. Oh, this upskirt shot of the golems dying is really interesting. Look at this! I'm in creative mode! Oh my god! Ha! It's a creative test world, got you. So, this is the plan for our villager area. Apparently this isn't a circle, but I don't, I don't care. Anyway, uh, I didn't do that, but the guys on the server were going to make a villager area, which is awesome. And then they got about as far as this square, with some chests in the corners, and then they attempted a breeder in the corner, and that's it. Well, I didn't like that. Also, I need to change the scenery. So this isn't exactly priority on the server, but, you know, I'm, I'm tired of the perimeter. I need a break. So this is what we're doing. Uh, this is kind of the layout idea. This is, like, how I like to test things. So we start with the area, and then I built a sorter. Over there, I'm probably going to have a breeder, and then we got crop farm for trading uh, all of, okay let me explain this more precisely so the villagers get sorted here I came up with this piston layout so that uh, I found out in this um, in this whatever north south coordinate direction yeah in this direction when they come back this way if this spot is open they'll actually pop off onto this one so with the piston that just kind of solidifies their position and every once in a while in that transitional phase you get something back here so I have that to catch it and that's way too much detail on something kind of minor. When you have a villager to keep, you flip this lever from back here, and you can decide where that track goes. And so if he's a farmer that you want, you just open up the slot, break the rail, move him in. This is my favorite way to do it. It's not exactly automated, but it's really, really clean. You can fit in a lot of villagers in a really neat, orderly space. You can label them with signs above, 
which is especially important for the librarians, where we would have perfect ones along the back, and then just the normal best, second best ones right over here. Blacksmiths would be back here. This is room for, I think, 20, but we'll see if we need expansion, because there is room on the other side where we could probably put stuff in. Uh, this would be uh, then for pumpkins, and then crafted melons, so I'm going to make a speed crafter back here. And that's pretty much the whole area, uh, other than the carrots and potato farms, of course. Uh, the breeder needs to be super far away, and that's kind of our parameters. Just make sure the breeder and everything is separate. This should be plenty fast for the trading, and then we would need to build more crop farms for the actual breeder, which I'm not sure exactly if I want to do that. I might just have this chest, instead of like being like so, have it hang off, and when this hopper is full, I'll just have this loot right here lead off and have this stuff then go to the breeder. I think that's a better way to do it. Um, that's what we did last time, and it worked out great. That way we don't need to build more crop farms just to breed stuff. And that also has the added bonus of because the breeder isn't actually getting crops when this isn't full, as you're trading, you won't be producing as many villagers because you wouldn't be doing that at the same time anyway. So it's kind of an ingenious, lazy way to, you know, save on building more than you need to, prioritize the crops so that when this is full they're not being wasted, and you don't have to be farming villagers like crazy when you're trading because we would probably just be shutting this off anyway. Huh. I hope you followed that. Probably a little boring because I'm just flying around in creative, but that's my plan and what I'll be doing for the next however long this takes. Uh, I think I just need the breeder and then a little bit of circuitry to do what I just said, and then I'll probably be building it in this episode. Guys, I really like this clock. Wow. So if I move this entire thing one block over, it'll work perfectly. Look at this shit. Delusion thinks he's a villager. <laughs> just realized I stopped recording right before the epic finale. Bullshit! You flew! Get out of there! Get out of there! You're gonna ruin it! Been waiting so long! It hey, worked. Hey, it worked once. I guess it's perfect. It's never gonna have to be tested again. Never. So it works. Alright. <laughs> so this is... Up the this is similar rates to like what we can expect from the breeder. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's like 200 villagers a second. That's actually, like, promising right there. Wow, this is kind of weird. Here at Villager Breeding Institute, we treat our villagers with the utmost respect, and when there's too many of them, we, uh... Alright, hey, Bill, fall test, number one. Look, he's not dead, and you took no damage, because you're in I'm game mode one. Do it. No, okay. Do it. Boom. Oh, two and a half. That will Hi. kill you, though. Come here. Uh, Come here. Other, Other corner. Oh my god, that was scary. <laughs> Your face. So I figured out that I stopped them on the fence gate right here. Um, yeah. Because when they get unloaded like this with the delay in the repeater, they center on both the hoppers, which is faster because you can't just turn this off. They'll stop at the back hopper. So now if I ooh, trigger it, mm -hmm. see now all of these clocks are going at a typical compared to speed. And I just realized we should probably be using observers for this. Okay, so. So when the minecart comes back, wow, that, wow, and you might have noticed we have to keep it below, this ice stream right here would be like Y0 or 1, like this is the lowest block we can place. Well good, you did 1, now we need like 7, oh, God. oh yeah, alright. So let's not even wait to see if you did it right, let's just immediate test. Wow, that's pretty cool. Are we, uh, oh, he was just done already. I actually like that a lot. Today on my Nerva Busters, we are testing these clocks and we are putting the items into an elevator designed by a friend of mine, Tittle. And uh, if this doesn't keep up, then we will. Uh, all right. So it looks like, oh, and the items have even spit out the other side. Okay, we have a new elevator designed by question mark. It is gigantic and we are going to test it. So it stops the items back here with a pulse extender to deal with the items, I guess. Is that working? Brilliant. What an awesome design, question mark. If anybody thinks I'm being sarcastic, I literally... Like, somebody built this on the server. It's probably mangoes, but you never know.
Honestly, I think the smartest idea would be to have no elevator at all. We could just make this go, go up higher. higher. You know, let's think back to like when Packed Ice wasn't in the game. We had to get really, really creative. Because <laughs> I remember not having Packed Ice for many years, in fact. And, oh man, could you move all of this up like over here or something? So we would just need to have it go diagonally up and then... That is exactly what we need. You have... Uh, I'd we... give you a 6 out of 10 on the whole world edit skill set, but... Yeah, that's acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Well, Let's I mean... see, we need piston here. Mm, piston, piston. Maybe not the right guy for the job, but... Capable of thinking intelligent thoughts sometimes, so... <laughs> I'm not an expert on this myself. <laughs> You should always be an expert on everything. Here's a fun fact. When I started designing this thing, I used Dark Oak for no good reason. And at the time, we didn't have a Dark Oak farm. But now that we do, I could seriously see a Dark Oak being... Dark Oak being is a nice choice for this block. I always like wiring the Dark Oak. I don't know. She's got a nice color. <gasps> I just realized my Minecraft sound is super low because I was doing something the other day. I'm sorry, viewers who like to hear stuff. You know, I don't actually think I've really done one of these Minerva Logs in creative mode, because... I don't know, I wanted it to be mostly on our survival world, but... This is also a very important part of the survival aspect, is actually, like, planning this stuff out before we do anything. Because if we don't know what we're doing, then we don't have our shit together, and then if we don't have our shit together... Not Ooh, that's perfect! Oh, did you just see how that lined up? Look at that! That is exactly perfectly what we needed. No, no, no. Don't. No. If you mess up my rails, I am... Personally, I don't like elevators. Like, um, I've always liked the fence gate ones because they were so elegant. But nowadays, they're, they're just like, clunky and they go up in a weird pattern. Um, you need redstone. So. Yeah, yeah, redstone at all. This I much prefer. The old design was perfectly lagless, you know? I mean, like, fence posts, they have client-side lag, but, I mean, they didn't really matter. Well, <laughs> that's kind of cool just to watch all the melons float along the end. With these crafting systems, uh, indicator lights are surprisingly important. Because unless you know which of these columns are full, you basically just need to have some kind of system that tells you when it's completely full. So to have a smart system like this is really important. The elevator for this. <laughs> <laughs> that moment when you literally need an elevator for one block. <sighs> Um, so, at least for Tittle's design, you need a chest stabilizer. <laughs> so, you li we're going to have to bring this a whole extra block. Is that going to... Oh, you know what? Check it out. We could drop the whole thing down a block before the elevator starts. That way I can bring this down a block. I prefer that. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, just throw in a piston. Cool. It's pretty smooth, actually. So, for this elevator, I'm thinking of something a little bit unique. Built. So, with this configuration, let's see if we can just complete the glass and then input the items, and then this should make a nice little stream going up. I don't know if this is practical, but it's definitely an idea I want to play with. That's also going to be... Yeah, okay. Alright, let's test this with magma blocks. Nine stacks in there. Nine stacks in there. So then all of the items would be flowing up nice and cool. And that would come up right within this little area here. And then I think that's how I want to distribute the watermelon. So I'll just kind of have a row of chests like so that I'd be filling up as I craft. And it would be kind of a noisy thing, but I think it'd be fun. And that would make us use three different kinds of elevation methods. So I don't know. I think it's a cool idea. And I'm going to build this just because it's a little bit unique. Say that again, just as you suggested it before. We should make this thing in the circle a big Pokeball. Yes. 
I needed it for the record. This is the reasonable way to do it. Absolutely. Now let's make this green. Let's color code stuff. Alright, perfect. Now we can just make sure this won't spill. Absolutely necessary. That worked out so well. <laughs> Why this thing? <laughs> <laughs> this is my way. No, 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 no. Perfect. All right. So you come down here, all the stuff comes in, you speed craft some magma blocks. Oh, that is just beautiful. And they're all going to fly out to the sides and stuff, because these elevators... Wait, are... that's a problem. The first one doesn't sort. <laughs> yeah, you can easily just... Yeah. Is that going to fix it? Yeah, a bit, I think. No, no, no let's be sure. Yeah. It does. Uh, yeah, okay, it works. By the way, the flaw in this is right there. If you put in an odd number of items, it won't actually sort all of them. But we don't care. So, <laughs> I think that's going to work. And then let's just give it a nice thin sheet of spawn spawn proof ability, of course, because Enderman can spawn because in water. Spawns. Perfect. That looks. That's what it's gonna look. Oh my god. <laughs> we we should actually bring a squid into this thing. Yep, we should. Oh, well done. Oh, you made it a pokeball. That's cool. So, oh, that is so much better than before. Can we line this in like coal? Oh, that is much oh, better. We got one. <laughs> How did you even do that? Oh, he, he floated up. He floated up. Oh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh, this is just. Oh, do you check this guy's out? Check this out. I love squid. Look. Wait for it. Wait for them to suffocate. <laughs> You're spamming them. My FPS is dropping. Watch. 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 I got 10 FPS right now. Oh, here we go! <laughs> oh, that's, a going in a circle. <laughs> that's a cool effect. And the FPS is back. <laughs> As if it never happened. This actually, this area has made me really happy. Look, this is like nice and compact, a bunch of redstone. In this system, we've got uh, pumpkin that's storage. Weird. Melon speed crafting, melon distribution for over here, where you can trade with the farmers and get your loot right over here and right over there. That's awesome. We could actually make this eight wide. I don't really think that'd be a problem. This would just have to come out a little bit. It wouldn't be center, but hey, nothing's final. You know, we should move this entire crop farm over three blocks and make this even. <laughs> Ruby, you're up. <laughs> what do you want done? That whole crop <laughs> farm. Remember we. Wait, no, that wasn't you. That was uh, the other ruby. We spent, like, an hour getting those in place. We need to move the entire thing three blocks out on each side. Oh, that will mess up the villagers. So oh, we can spawn a new one. Uh, no, with world edit, I think it moves everything. Oh, nice. Whatever you just did, that's perfect. Like I said, the villagers... Ha, ah, this is what I meant. You see, all of these are not unloading at two hopper speed. That's why I had mine like that. So this is Luflossi's idea of harvesting them in this way, which isn't bad, and he says it's more like friendly, which I agree or disagree with. I can get the idea get that it's it. more spread it's out. Spread. Yeah, and it uses less redstone dust. But I'm, yeah, like this one just triggered, and it it I bit my FPS barely flinched. flinched. In the game, hardly even. It's fine. Um, I think both are. They have their perks. I heard you. <laughs> Putting these villagers in place That's in fine. creative mode has got to be the easiest thing. <laughs> and then I can just get out of there. Bye, Ruby. I keep calling him Ruby. Rubix. Oh. You see, that's what happens. You use a nickname and it's stuck forever. 
I mean, it's fine if it gets stuck forever. Like, we don't need you to have a real name, but, like, a different uh. Ruby joined the server. So now it's, like... And his name is Green Ruby, so, like, admit... He plays on the it defensive. actually is Ruby. Wow. I can place these, like, so low. If you place these on the fence post, they go up. Why is that? Like... Yep, alright, so I got these two chests full of items going oh. towards this. And now the villagers will pick it up and eventually start breeding actually pretty soon. <laughs> Look how <laughs> fast a double chest was... gets totally eaten. Now, mind you, we already put in one double chest, but watch. That's what you get when each villager has an inventory of eight stacks. Can we use that instead of hoppers for sorting potatoes? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do anything with them. They might get spit out when they breed, but... Yeah, that's great. That's insanely fast. Jeez, I just want to get them breeding so we can see some babies pop out. Oh, there's our first baby. Yay. Alright. Um... I don't want to say I'm going to end the episode here, because if we keep playing, then I'm going to add more, but this is pretty much it. I mean, we got a breeder, one of every farm type that we will need, minus wheat, we'll add that at some point maybe. But this right here should be the complete layout for the villager area. Pumpkin, melon farm, carrot, potato, when that is full, the, the breeder will turn on, and then the villagers will go there, they'll grow up, and then they'll move over into this ice, uh, not ice stream, just this water stream, where we will then... Uh, sort them, bad ones die, good ones will get moved along here. We'll just have a powerful sword and a beacon somewhere, and then that'll... Good. Yep, this is what I was saying. I said I'd keep recording if we kept playing. So all the babies are now growing up at, like, the same times. <laughs> so all of these guys are just making their way down. This breeder is actually going really fast. So with these 32 pairs in here, we should expect just shy of 200 villagers an hour. Which is, I think, three or four a minute. Um, yeah. This is a really, really fast breeder. Uh, Should we have an override thing to save on lag somewhere? Yep. Uh, this is what we did last time, by the way. We had a piston extending through this block, and then every time we wanted to shut it off, all the babies yeah, just got killed. Good idea. Somebody else suggested that we, like, kill the village up here so that it just stops everything, but that worked for me. I don't care. Uh, that might be smarter. Um... Alright, um, turns out I didn't actually record any kind of outro with myself or any of the guys. But here it is, so we ended up not doing the villager thing. I think, I don't know, this is all just a blueprint. We'll change it in survival, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. But I already gave the kind of tour, the overlay. I really like this area, both in like the look of it and the style. Maybe on the server we will do some kind of pixel art on top of this thing. I'm not sure. Uh, I do realize that Luflossies might actually be, be a better design. Personally, I think they kind of balance each other out because this one harvests faster. And you see, that wasn't really too bad. It just it starts, it stops, it's over, and then you're good. And then it's really the same farm after that. This area is totally open to changes or adjustments. We could easily do that. We don't have any kind of enclosure or overbearing kind of style, so we might get that done at some point, like our storage room down there, work in progress. I like to have these kinds of uh, stylistic looks. I mean, just a Pokeball is fun, but it doesn't really fit anything going on here because we don't really have any rhyme or reason. The whole idea is to have everything be convenient and right next to each other and then have all the farms that we need, and that's great, but, you know, as far as an artistic standpoint, it's really just kind of clean. It's Lastly, I want to talk about this video being in 1080p 60fps, so I don't think I actually mentioned this, but yeah, I figured out that recording in 60 frames per second in 1080p isn't actually that difficult for me. So if you're curious at all, I play with VSync. Without VSync, I'd be going in the hundreds usually. Like if I look into the off here, yeah, it usually goes a lot higher, but this area is kind of hurting me, so I don't know what made that come to mind, but... V-Sync's pretty nice, it just caps it at 16, looks good. Tell me what you think. Um, this is probably going to take a really t long time to render. So, you know, if you guys really don't care, I don't know. I hope YouTube doesn't butcher this quality too much, but I can't know that right now. But I hope you enjoyed the video of us just kind of messing around in creative. Um, I haven't done anything like this before, but we do have quite a few of these little sessions where we figure stuff out and spawn squids in areas that shouldn't have squids. Because... 
we do plan everything ahead of time. Like we design stuff first in creative. Typically, more often than not, we'll make a schematic and then we'll build it in survival with all our materials and such. And that's probably the best way to get things done. Is that not even? But uh, I think that's the greatest way to really accomplish these big builds because this is not something you do off the top of your head. Like I changed these chests and everything. This was back there at some point and it was, it was all messed up. We even changed this item stream up because we found out that it wouldn't work. If you'd done that in survival, well, this would have taken many, many hours to do, not just a few, a couple hours like we did today. So I thought I'd go ahead and document it and see how it turns out. Uh, I don't have any proper outro, so the video is just going to end abruptly.